It was a disaster. But unlike most disasters, this one was carefully planned. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. In the film Towering Inferno, nothing was left to chance. We will start off by lighting the pilot, bringing up the fire, putting in the smoke. We will then roll the cameras. I will call for water. I will call action. I will count one, two, three, and somewhere on the way to ten, a pistol shot will go off, and within two seconds after that, the big explosion will occur. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In the studio, it all happened as planned, and when the director wanted it to stop, it did. Unfortunately, in real life, fires are not so obliging. Fire kills around a thousand people every year in Britain alone. Many of the victims die in their own homes. And if you think it could never happen to you, spare a thought for the other people who once felt the same way. The Londoner who thought it would be all right to top up his paraffin heater while it was alight, and then ran into a problem he never expected. The mother of four who went up the road for a packet of cigarettes, leaving her children alone in the house and a box of matches in the bedroom. The pensioner, who always had a last cigarette before going to bed. A few weeks ago, he left it like this. In a matter of minutes, the chair was alight. Half an hour later, the fire brigade was called, but by then it was too late. You probably think you could never be involved in a situation like this. But then that's what the people who lived here thought, until fire shattered their beliefs. Our homes are so familiar, we always assume they're safe. But every year, hundreds of people find they're not as safe as they believed. Fires break out in homes of every size and type. So, let's see what we can learn from the experiences of those who, due to fire, have lost everything. Sometimes the dangers are so blatantly clear, you'd think no one could possibly make such an obvious mistake. But it happens again and again. Oil heaters are involved in far too many fires. Yet the heaters themselves are seldom faulty. The problem is misuse. The correct method of refilling is safe and simple. Extinguish the flame, move the heater well away from anything which might set fuel alight, and use the right equipment for the job. The wrong methods may be quicker, but they cost lives. By refilling this fire while it was alight, the owner of the house saved a couple of minutes. But a tap on the fuel drum jammed so he couldn't turn it off. The resulting fire cost him his life. Because they're light and portable, heaters like this are easily knocked over. Many modern oil heaters incorporate safety devices, but safety still depends on the way they're used. Never move a heater when it's alight or leave it in a place like this, by a door, and in the direct route of drafts. Drafts which could lead to this. Never leave heaters in corridors, or on stairs. In a fire, they're your escape routes. And those net curtains could easily cause a blaze. And remember, heaters are easily knocked over. Fires involving flammable liquids often spread quickly. In this case, too quickly for the occupants to escape. It pays to take precautions. But perhaps you rely on central heating, with a little help from an occasional electric fire.
Electricity should be one of the safest forms of heat, but it is a major cause of fires. Radiant heaters have burned down many a home, with children and old people frequently among the victims. Sometimes equipment is faulty, but more often the problem is misuse. Keep heaters away from combustible materials and out of reach of children. And there are other forms of electric heat where the dangers aren't so clear. If an electric blanket gets crumpled, heat will build up. Heat which can lead to this. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions and switch off before you get into bed, unless your blanket works via a transformer. Then you should be safe. Lights too can generate heat. For years, a Leicestershire mother left a bedside light switched on while her child went to sleep. To cut down the glare, she draped a scarf over the top of the shade. A lower wattage bulb would have been safe. Many of the dangers we face are far more routine. So routine, in fact, we take them for granted. The fire in this dining room was a wedding present. It's almost part of the family, so it doesn't attract much notice. But when we arrived to film, we immediately noticed the worn wiring, which, when you least expect it, can set a room alight. Fires are always unexpected. They usually start in very simple ways. But while some dangers should be obvious, there are others which aren't so clear. We're always told not to overload power points. Yet when we do, everything seems to work, so why worry? The owner of this house could tell you. At least he could today. He couldn't have done a few weeks ago when he added an extra plug to power a single bar fire to a socket he was already using to run a television, a clock, and his hi-fi. It all seemed to work, and it went on working, so he didn't give it much thought. But the current he was using was more than the socket was designed to supply. Under the floor, the wires supplying the socket gradually began to feel the strain. A fuse, which should have operated to cut off the supply, failed to blow because someone had mended it with wire which was too thick. It happened over several weeks, but we've speeded up the process. One night, when he was asleep upstairs, the insulation finally failed, and the simple act of overloading that plug cost the man and his family their lives. So, never overload any electric point, and even when the loading is correct, at night, disconnect the supply. Televisions left plugged in frequently cause fires. Fires which can produce toxic fumes from which it's sometimes impossible to escape. Again, the danger is often overlooked until it's too late. Temporary wiring is particularly dangerous. If you've got to join two lengths of cable together, use the right materials for the job. It's often cheaper in the long run to go out and buy a new flex. Makeshift methods may work all right for a while, but in due course, possibly when you've forgotten all about them, the insulation will fail. A fire may well result. When wiring is old or frayed, the same kind of thing can happen. Again, the dangers are often so familiar, they're easily overlooked. When that insulation finally fails, allowing live and neutral wires to come into contact with each other, this is what will happen. So, check your electrical equipment and look for signs of wear. You'll be surprised how often you do find something which needs attention. The electrical system in your home should be inspected by a qualified electrician at least once every five years. Then you'll know you're safe. Always be on the lookout for the little things. They too can lead to fires. This is the room we use most of all, and it's the starting point for an awful lot of fires. Again, the main cause is carelessness. This, for example, looks harmless enough, but it's the starting point of many a fire. 
The point at which flammable liquids ignite is known as the flash point. Some liquids, like petrol, catch a light very easily. Others, like the fat in this pan, have to reach a fairly high temperature before they will burn. This is the same oil you saw in that pan. Like most cooking oils, it won't ignite at the sort of temperature required to do a thorough cooking job, but if the temperature becomes excessive, it will burst into flames, just like this petrol. So, if you forget a chip pan, it's only a matter of time. And if you cook by electricity, remember, you don't necessarily lose the heat the moment you switch off. Never leave pans unattended. Some of the other liquids used at home may also be flammable. Here, there's a warning clearly marked on the can. But like so many of us, he didn't read the instructions before starting work, so he's unaware of the dangers he faces. That adhesive, like all flammable liquids, is giving off vapor. The vapor is invisible, but it behaves like this. It's heavier than air, so it sinks to the ground. It can travel quite a long way, and anything like the pilot light inside that central heating boiler, could set it alight at any moment. Yet the warning is clear. But then fires always occur when they're least expected. Of course, some fires in homes are started deliberately. Fires of the right size in the right place are a welcome sight. But even in a grate designed for the purpose, there's always a risk. A risk someone here was recently reminded of. A spark started to burn the carpet, but fortunately someone sitting nearby acted promptly. With no one in the room and the fire unguarded, it might have been a very different story. So in every room in every home there are familiar things which, through carelessness or neglect, can cause fires. Fires which break out every day in homes of every shape and size. And if you've got a garage or a work shed, it's worth checking there, too. Small areas like this are often fire hazards. Take that light bulb, for example, resting on the wood. And then there are all those liquids, none of them properly labelled, so no one really knows if they're flammable or not. And the blue plastic container holding petrol for his lawnmower. It's illegal and it's dangerous. But why should he worry? He's convinced he's safe. And aren't we all? After all, fires are things you read about in newspapers. Why should they concern us? Fire brigades react quickly to every emergency call. Within minutes of a call, they'll arrive at your door. The first few minutes of any fire are crucial. With prompt action, damage can be limited and lives saved. If you act quickly, you can often prevent a serious fire. But you must know what to do, and you must be prepared. If you take the wrong action, you can make a fire worse. That's what happens if you put water on a burning chip pan. Unless it's a very small fire, which can be put out in a matter of seconds, call the fire brigade before you do anything else. When you ask for the fire brigade, the operator will immediately connect you with fire brigade control. But the people here can't do anything until you tell them where the fire is. So give them your address and make sure they've got it right. Brigades everywhere are on a 24-hour alert, so you won't have long to wait. Though it may seem long if you're faced with a fire like this. But if you've taken precautions, you can deal with the emergency in a matter of seconds. Without prompt action, a fire can quickly spread. It looks easy, but in a fire, time is short. You must have firefighting equipment which is effective and reliable. There are some extinguishers which look very handy, but beware. They may be useless for anything but the smallest fires. The fire is still going, but the extinguisher isn't. Aerosols may be cheap but in a fire they can explode. So, choose equipment you can rely on. 
extinguishers with plenty of capacity, made with the experience and resources of one of the world's largest manufacturers of industrial firefighting equipment. And for chip pan fires, smother the flames by using a fire blanket. The blanket cuts off the oxygen supply needed to keep the fire alight. Turn off the heat and leave the pan covered so it can't reignite. Fire blankets and extinguishers take up very little room. They fit comfortably into even a small kitchen and in other places too. Places where a fire could easily break out and without prompt action spread. Temporary homes need protection too. Boats and caravans are particularly vulnerable. Extinguishers like this can be used with confidence on any type of outbreak. One of the biggest hazards of fire is smoke. It kills more people than flames. The smoke from even a small fire can quickly fill an entire room. Here, we've set fire to a square of foam from a baby's mattress. In less than a minute, the room is full of fumes and the firemen going to tackle the blaze will have to use breathing apparatus. If a fire gets out of control, retreat and close the doors behind you. When doors are left open, flames and fumes can spread, as they did here. In minutes, the stairs were ablaze. But on the top floor, one door was closed, so this corridor escaped serious damage. Today, as a result of fire, more people will lose everything they possess. Homes will be wrecked and lives lost. Fire doesn't discriminate. It can strike anywhere, anytime. It destroys, it burns, it kills. Yet most of the tragedies we've seen could have been avoided by eliminating risks. By being prepared for any emergency, however remote the possibility may seem. And by using common sense to deal with the most common cause of fires, carelessness. At work, there's a legal responsibility to provide firefighting equipment and to consider what to do if fire does break out. At home, there's no legal requirement. There's simply a choice between safety and destruction. And the choice is yours.